Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, I like for us to talk about growth patterns in several figures and see if we can develop an equation that demonstrates this growth pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with these figures below. We have figure one, figure two, and figure three. And what I'd like you for you to do initially is to sort of look at these figures and kind of think about how are they growing from figure to figure. Okay, think about how many tiles, how many new tiles are being added from each figure. And what might help is that if you have another color to use, is that you might wanna shade in the new tiles that are being added for each figure. So looking here at figure one, and then looking here at figure two, I can see that this tile in the top left corner here has been added since figure one. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade that in just so I know that that's been added. And as I look and I compare, I also see that it looks like these two on the right have also been added. So in total, it looks like I've had three tiles added, right? One on the left, two on the right. Now we're gonna go over here to figure three, and I think this pattern is still gonna hold, right? As I look on the left side, I see that they're still adding in one tile on the left side, and they're also adding these two tiles on the right side. So again, it looks like our pattern from figure to figure is plus three. Okay, looks like we're adding three tiles each time. So what I would like for you to do now is, is to think of a way, or can you figure out a way that we could sketch out figure zero and figure four. So what this is gonna have you do now is it's gonna have you kind of think and use your brain and think about what the next figure will look like. So I think it's always easy to start off with figure four because we've developed this pattern that we're adding three each time. So I know that when I jump from figure three to figure four, figure four will also be just adding those three tiles. So what we wanna do is we wanna draw out our old figure three and do your best, it's okay if it doesn't come out as clean as those are. But it looks like with figure three, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then it looks like one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. I need to add one more here. So that is what figure three is. But remember for figure four, we're going to need to add another block to the top of the left side. I'll go ahead and still shade that in orange. And then I'm also going to have to shade in two blocks on the right. And I'll go ahead and shade that in as the orange blocks as well. So we see that that pattern, right, that growth pattern is still holding true. Now let's see if we can go backwards. So we have figure one here. And I wanna see, can we go to figure zero so that we can create figure one by adding those same tiles, right? Because we know that the pattern is still adding three tiles, right? One on the left, two on the right. So what might be helpful is on figure one, let's shade in the tiles that were added to figure zero, right? And this pattern should still hold. One on the left, two on the right. So I will go ahead and shade this guy in as one on the left and then two on the right. And when we do it this way, we can see that these four blocks that are left here are actually what figure zero was. They were the blocks where we added one to the left and we added two to the right. So hopefully we're starting to see now how we have these figures, how the growth pattern works, and how we can develop other figures, right? If we wanted to, we could draw figure five and we could still follow that same principle of adding one to the left and then adding one to the right, okay? So let's go ahead and define what our growth pattern was. Our growth pattern here 
was plus three tiles. And if you want to be more specific, you could even say one on the left, two on the right. Okay, that is our growth pattern for these sets of figures. So what I'd like to do now is, is I would like to see if we can create a table so that we can have all of this data nicely put in one table where maybe we'll be able to derive an equation for this growth pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a table off to the left side here and I'll have an X and a Y column. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let X be the figure number and I'll go ahead and label that off here right above. X is the figure number and Y is going to represent the number of tiles. So looking here at figure zero, that would be where X is zero, I see that there are four tiles. So I know that at figure zero, Y will be four. Okay, at figure one, I just need to count up all these tiles where it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know figure one will have seven tiles. And we want to continue this process of looking at figure two, counting up all the tiles, and hopefully we will be able to fill out a nice, complete table. And more importantly, looking at this table, I'm hoping that we can see that our growth pattern is holding here, right? Our growth pattern that we saw was plus three tiles. Well, as I move down this table, I see that from each output to the next output, it is plus three all the way down. Now what our next step is, and I'm gonna go ahead and move away from the figures and I'm gonna zoom in on this so we can really see, is that we now wanna kinda develop an equation to help us represent this table. Okay, and so we're gonna want our equation to start off with y equals something. And so what I want you guys to think about is what do I have to do to x? Okay, think about x, remember x is our input here. x represents our figure number. Okay, what am I doing to x to get to y? Okay, and what most students think is that, oh, I know that we're adding three tiles here, so if I'm adding three tiles, I'll just have to write a plus three, and that that's what we think our equation is. And that actually is incorrect. And it's incorrect because if we look at this equation, x plus three, that means to get my output here, I plug in this zero, I add three, I should get my output, but that doesn't work here for zero, right? If I change this x to be a zero, and I add three to it, that ends up equaling three tiles, but we know that figure zero did not have three tiles, it had four tiles. So, while I do like that we have a plus three, I believe that that plus three is in the wrong spot. So when we're talking about growth pattern, it's not gonna be something that we add on to the x, it actually ends up being the thing that we're multiplying to the x, okay? So instead of writing the plus three here, I'm gonna go ahead and write the three there, right next to the x, and that's showing that y equals three times x. Now again, we still gotta think this through about whether or not this is gonna work out for this equation here, this table that we have. Again, now I know when I plug in a zero here, if I drop in my input as zero, I know that I'll end up with three times zero, and three times zero is still not giving me my four. So I know that I want to get to four, but when I plug in this zero, I get a zero as my output. So the last thing we wanna think about when we're creating this equation is that we're always gonna to wanna to have some number on the end of this kind of helping us to get started, right? We know that each figure will be growing by three, but we are gonna to have to put something at the end of that equation. The thing that we wanna to add to the end is actually going to be 
how many tiles we initially start with at figure zero. So back here, looking at figure zero, I see that there are indeed four tiles there. So if I make this a plus four at the end, this is actually going to be our equation for this table. And let's, let's see how that works by checking it out. We know our first figure over here has seven tiles, okay? We know that because also our table here shows that when X is one, we get seven tiles. Now watch what happens when I plug this into my equation here. I end up with Y equals three, remember it's three times the figure number, and I'm adding the four original tiles. So we see that three times one gives us a three, and what this is representing is, is that we started with four tiles, and we're adding those three, so that's because when X is one, I have my output as seven, right? When my figure number is one, there are seven tiles. Okay, and again, we could do this again to see if it holds up with any of the other inputs, right? Every time you make the equation, you're going to need to see if it holds up with your figures. So we know figure three has 13 tiles. Let's see, if I plug in a three here to this equation, well, three times three gives me nine. I bring the plus four down. Nine plus four is 13. What do you know? Our equation's working, okay? So that's why we wanna create this nice equation. And the reason why we wanna have an equation for this problem is that let's say, you know, instead of, if I asked you guys, what is the fifth figure? How many fifth is the fifth figure gonna have, right? How many tiles will it have? I think it's easy to see that we would just add three to 16 and we could extend this down and this would become 19, right? But let's say I asked you guys, what is the 100th figure going to have? How many tiles are in the 100th figure, right? And what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna sit here and write out this table the, for all the way down to 100, right? Instead, what we can do is, is we can take this equation now and as my input, right, our X value, our input is the figure number. If I wanna know how many is in the 100th figure, I just plug in 100 into my equation and now I can solve this and know how many tiles there are. So three times 100 would give me 300 plus the four. So 300 plus four gives me 304 tiles, okay? So this is what we're gonna be focusing on in the next couple of videos, is looking at growth patterns on a set of figures, determining how those figures are growing, and then seeing if we can relate that to an equation, right? We like the equation, because then we can figure out what any figure number is gonna be, right? How many tiles will be in any figure number? If I asked you what was in the figure 1000, all we would have to do is not draw it out, instead plug in 1000 into this equation. All right guys, it's that math magician, and I'll see you next time.